Okay. She's all glassed, pretty much. So I'm real happy with the progress that I've got so far. This thing is glassed. She's set up overnight now. And it's not a full cure, it's still a little rubbery. It's still a green stage, they call it, and that's when you want to trim it down, because if you let it set to full hard another day, you'll have to cut this off with a saw, or you can file it or use a grinder, but when it's green, if you've got an edge like this, you can just pull it along it with a file, a medium file. hanging down some when you can get a grip on it. You can use a sharp knife, I use an X-Acto knife. You can just smooth it up with the file. You have to keep cleaning it because it clogs up with this green resin that I use. I got a foam block and some 80 grit, 60 or 80 grit. up any rough areas and my transitions where the cloth overlaps I take the six oh, I got 80 grit here just kind of level that down I don't do a whole lot of leveling until after I get the fill coat on but I will do some because it uh, it helps it you have to less, less resin you have to grind off. Sometimes I get these little bubbles and I can push if it's still green you can push them down and they'll stick. If otherwise you have to open them up and get resin in there. But yeah, I'll go over these rough edges. Because the fill coat's gonna blend everything in quite a bit. And then from the fill coat, um, I'll do maybe a little sanding, not a whole lot, before I go on with the, the epoxy uh, two-part primer. Because it'll get a chemical bond to all this resin. And that'll stabilize the resin. And then when I sand down that, I'll sand, I'll sand through it until I start seeing resin and cloth. You don't want to sand into the cloth. As soon as you see cloth, you want to stop sanding. You don't want to take off your strength that you put on with your cloth. And these little areas here, the openings are my spaced rail. I just cut those out. Those out of there and I'll smooth these edges round them over nice and when the fill coat goes on it'll smooth everything out. I want to show this uh, the area here where I don't have it painted a couple of inches down from the top and I've overlapped the glass about an inch and a half to give straight to this deck and transom joint. I've just glassed over to this area and that'll all smooth down and this up here I'll show you about how easy this is to do this when the glass sticks up a little bit. Okay. Into the file. Just a few strokes. And just where, do this where the where those fuzzy areas too that stick up above. And I gotta clean my file. Takes it right off. And you could say that once, once you get that recoded and primered and painted, you'll never be able to see where the glass makes its transition. And I wanted to mention these little things. These are just the coolest things. It's an idea from working in the boat yard when you're doing glassing on the vertical surfaces, like on that 
cabin top, the glass wanted to slide over the side. It's just uh, little pieces of wood with a nail driven in the end, sharpened to a point. You can get your glass up there, just poke these through, put a bunch of them in there to hold your glass in place. And as soon as you get your resin on, you can pull them out. It's just a real time saver, just a neat idea. This a very simple thing that works really well. I filed really getting gunked up with all of this semi-cured resin, so I, every once in a while I just have a little lacquer thinner here and I just hit it with some lacquer thinner. And use my file card on it. These areas here are kind of a, a specialty thing, so I've made a specialty tool. It's a rat tail file that's sawed off. I can zoom in here. Zoom this down. And I want to radius this here. I'll be tying ropes onto here and we'll be grabbing the bow here. So Move that in a nice radius and off of it. And then hit these areas too. I cut the end off so it doesn't hit up here, but I'm in here doing this area. My fill coat, I'll put resin on these bare wood. There's going to be no bare wood on this coat. Everything's going to be there. I've gone over everything with the 80 grit paper, smoothed up any rough areas, my rough edges, and I did find a couple of bubbles. Find them there. There was one there. It's, if they're small, I wouldn't worry about them, but the bigger ones, uh, I opened them up. And I'll just uh, cut a little piece of cloth, put over there when I do my fill coat, uh, which is next. Okay, the fill coat, pretty much the same way. I used the brush and I coated all my bare wood. Just roll, it, roll some on there. And... Uh, you don't, you just want to fill the weave of the cloth. You don't want to put so much on that you get sags and it runs all over the place. Well, you do want to get enough to fill the weave, so I put it on and I brush it out with my brush. Smooth it out. And cover every place, just fill that cloth. You can't fill all your transitions and weird places, but that will be done later with the primer and filler. Mainly you just want to get a nice even coat that fills the weave and goes down in all your small areas. I'm going to go in here and get these places. That's bare wood. I need to carry a rag with me because it's going to want to run down my hall side. So yeah, it's feeling pretty good. See, it's filling that weave out. Yeah, fill coats are on. Yeah, she's looking pretty smooth and shiny now.